Hello everyone, welcome back to Rolling Solo. My name is Adam Smith. I'm always excited to dive into a new expansion for Mansions of Madness 2nd Edition. This is going to be no exception. This is another big box expansion for that game called The Path of the Serpent. And the reason I'm really excited for this one is not only my own, but actually the individuals who support me on Patreon as well, as I threw up a vote for upcoming unboxing videos, allowing those individuals supporting me there to actually have an impact on which games are going to hit the channel for unboxings. So we've already gone ahead and done a poll of which there's been a number of votes already cast to it and we've started off here with the top spot being Path of the Serpent and we're going to continue on from there. So without further ado we're going to start the unboxing by flipping this box over taking a look at the back of it and then dive inside. Welcome to the jungle. For all its primal beauty, the thick trees and lush greenery of the jungle conceal many perils. Unrelenting heat, limited supplies, and sharp-toothed beasts would be enough to drive any intrepid explorer back to the comforts of civilized society. Those that survive these extraordinary dangers are rewarded only with more challenges. Cursed idols, trap-filled temples, and long-forgotten gods await any who would dare to uncover them. The Path of the Serpent expansion sends investigators into the unexplored wilderness of the Amazon jungle. Investigators must discover ancient secrets of lost civilizations, stop a serpent's curse, and explore vine-covered crumbling ruins. In three new scenarios, battle horrifying serpent creatures, face stone monstrosities that come to life, and beat the ever-present danger of being lost to the jungle forever. The investigators will need to fight tooth and claw to survive their expedition into the forgotten reaches of this world. The very first thing you're going to run into when you open up the box is the Mansions of Madness 2nd Edition Path of the Serpent Overview Sheet. This sheet has a nice introduction to the expansion as well as letting you know the icon that represents all the cards and whatnot you will find inside the box so that you can rip this thing out or put it back in at your leisure. The expansion overview is right here and then we're going to go ahead and open this thing up to take a look at some of the things inside because this is where things get interesting. It's going to talk about some additional rules and some new things that come along with this expansion. So all the components are laid out, how you're going to assemble some of these monsters. That looks absolutely awesome. And then right over here, the additional rules. So we have what's called overgrowth now, which makes perfect sense in the jungle. We also have rubble tokens. Those are two different types of tokens being added into Mansions of Madness. Plus, it looks like we have a new puzzle added in. That's exciting. I always like to see those new puzzles as I believe there's about three to four already and having that additional one will just spice things up. This one's called a ring puzzle. So it's going to have all, all kinds of different things going on there than what is used to in the app already. We got some frequently asked questions here, of course, for anything that you need to check up and reference. And then finally, the credits on the back. So very easy to get through this and then, of course, merge this in in terms of rules. Now this I really enjoy. In every single one of these expansion boxes, you're gonna find some new tiles that are gonna add into the base game of Mansions of Madness. Again, that's gonna add more variability throughout and replayability even in the prior scenarios. So I'm actually really interested to see how any of these particular tiles that we're gonna see in the next little bit are gonna potentially be merged into or swapped out for prior scenarios that already exist. Again, these ones are very, very focused on the jungle, but I imagine there might be some areas of crossover over here but still I'm really excited to see what we got so we got the altar chamber up here more altar chamber type activity over here basically temple areas and then over here we have a pool up here in the top right we have overgrowth tokens that's what they're going to look like now I'm going to try to flip this over while this is rolling and of course some of these might actually pop out as they tend to do but that's just because they're cut so well on the opposite side over here, we have a plaza area. We have two river tiles. You can see there's a white dotted line through them, dividing them up. And then right here, we have what's called the rubble to token or tile on the opposite side of the overgrowth one. So that's the very first tile to take a look at. Second up, we have, ooh, this looks like a bed chamber, as this one's called. We got some more of those tokens, more overgrowth tokens here, which again will have the rubble on the opposite side. We have cracked chamber right here this is a really nice looking one and the burial chamber over here 
Again, what I love is the fact that these are double sided. So you're not just getting the one side worth of uh, stuff to look at. You can flip these over for even more. And you can see this stuff pops right out super easy. So it's probably gonna fall out as I flip them, which it looks like some of them are already. We got the temple stairs here. We have the overgrown path, uh, jungle ruins over here. Next up, we have the mosaic chamber. This is absolutely beautiful looking. Ruin chamber up here and a hall chamber over here, as well as more of those tokens. So we can tell there's gonna be a lot of that going on. Lots of overgrowth and rubble involved. Wow, now that's a cool looking tile. So over here, we got the rope bridge. That's awesome. Some dotted lines going around and then right to the center, a solid white line. We have the shrine up here, the river crossing. This looks to be a very interesting expansion. There's lots of tile sheets in here too. Uh, the pit, something you don't want to fall into. And on the opposite side, the pit ledge. So the ledge is here. The hole to fall into is over there. We probably don't want to avoid that. Uh, the Verdant cham Chamber up top here. And a storage chamber over here. Now we're actually starting to see some monsters that are going to come into play. Uh, additional monsters new to this particular game. So let's flip these over so you can see them close up. So we have uh, the ancient... Balisk, if I'm even pronouncing that correctly, the Serpent Person, and a few of those actually. Now we'll flip these over to the opposite side, take a look. Ooh, those are pretty awesome. We got the abandoned hut over here, some clearing areas, more clearing areas, jungle ruins, and then here is the back of those particular monsters. So you can see them. All right, moving on to the next tile here. We've got the statue chamber. That's another really nice look one. Again, anything with light I find to be really cool in Mansions of Madness. They do shadows really interestingly and light. So you can see up here, the sunlit chamber has this nice kind of like light hue going on to it, giving a little bit of life to what's otherwise a flat 2D tile. Tunnel over here, and we've got some more monsters to look at. These look different than the ones we just talked about. So these ones are Temple Guardians and the Feathered Serpent. Flipping this over to the opposite side. Wow, that's a really interesting one. So we have the Ruined Hut right here with a door. Jungle Ruins. Oh, this is really interesting. What is this? The Hollow Grove with Dead Tree 1, 2, and 3. And it looks like you can actually go inside of them. So that, you can tell that's gonna be a major element of one of the scenarios. That's very different. Having that many uh, kind of sealed off areas to go inside of. The ravine looks absolutely beautiful, broken up into three sections. You can kind of walk across that log. And then there is the back of those monsters we went past earlier. So we got some ones that involve flying and unstoppable as the keywords. Moving right along to the next tile, we still have, I think, oh no, this is the last one, the hall chamber number two. We have the throne chamber, very important. We have some actual uh, end caps, essentially, to be able to cap off doors and whatnot throughout the snares, or they're just chests and other things to kind of block off those paths. One, two, three, four, five new NPC characters, basically, for the scenarios. These two lovely miniatures are called the Feathered Serpents. We talked about them earlier, so I want to give you a nice close-up shot of the miniatures for these. They look pretty cool. You'll notice they have the little nubs at the very bottom of the miniature to go into those black bases that are very, very well known for Mansions of Madness. But as I've mentioned in prior unboxings for Mansions of Madness content, I do not plug these into the black bases that come into this expansion or any of the other expansions. I actually buy clear plastic bases because I love gluing these miniatures to clear ones so that you don't lose out on the beautiful artwork of the tiles as the monsters move around because, well, if they're on those black ones that come inside the box, everything just gets covered up and I really don't like them. But other than that, miniature-wise, these look really, really nice. If you were curious what I was referring to when I was talking about the bases, this is them. They're solid black and some of them are massive. Now, the only bonus of these bases that's actually quite nice is the fact that the monster tile can actually be slotted into the base so that you have a reference of the monster's name and its attributes and all the little skill checks that you may or may not be doing against it as you go through. But to be totally honest, it's just as easy to have those off to the side of the game board and not have to deal with these black bases. But again, if you don't want to go the route of putting them on clear bases, those still do the job quite well. Each of these three miniatures are referred to as a serpent person. They have some nice detail on them. And again, I'm going to go ahead and be definitely putting these on the clear bases. I really want to paint some of these as they're starting to look pretty cool. There's one there with a bent spear you'll see. Some of them don't. They're perfect, almost perfectly straight. But then there's one there in the bottom left that has quite a bend. But again, very easily, you can just take this miniature, put underneath some hot water, and then put it back into position the way you'd like it, and then immediately put it in some very cold water 
and that spear will fix itself quite nicely. I think it's a good time to talk about the investigators that come inside this expansion. Of course, Leo Anderson is joining the crew. The expedition leader says once per round, when you perform a move action, another investigator may move one space. So very, very good at moving around. Average across the top here in terms of being equal in both categories for health and sanity and his skills across the far right hand side. If you want to know more about his story, you can pause the screen and read this card right here to get an idea of more about Leo. Next up, we have Ursula Downs, the Explorer. Once per round, you may move one space before or after performing an Explore action or resolving the effects of a Sight token. So a lot of movement-based characters here. Again, her stats in the far right and her health and sanity. Flipping this over, we can take a look at her story so far as well if you want to pause the screen and read that. Next up, we have Daniela Reyes, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, eight health, six sanity. And when a puzzle is solved, you may either gain two clues or discard one horror. That's actually really good. Uh, she's got crazy strength, four agility, three observation. She's actually a very powerful character on the strength side of things. She's very, very useful. And of course, Norman Withers, the astronomer. Action, if you are in an outdoor space, gain two clues or discard one horror. Activate this ability only once per round. He is definitely stronger in the sanity side of things. And this is his breakdown, being a little bit weak in influence, but very strong in will. Flipping it over, we can see the story so far for him. So here's an up close view of the four investigators inside the box. You can take a look at each of them. We just went over them, but now you get to see their sculpts. Of course, you don't have to put them on a clear base whatsoever as they already have a base, but if you want to paint them, there's a lot of nice detail there. Now, not every Fantasy Flight product underneath the insert actually has anything. Most are actually quite empty, but every once in a while there is something, so it's always worth taking the insert out no matter how nice it looks to have the shadowed art there. You always want to check underneath of it. This also was something a lot of people miss with Star Wars Outer Rim where some of the actual player boards were stored underneath and I believe Fallout did this as well but here in this expansion we've got ourselves some more miniatures. Once you go ahead and open up the bag you're going to find all of these parts. These four up here are all for the same miniature which I'm going to try and assemble very shortly after this clip and this one right here actually represent the Temple Guardians of which there are two of them. This right here is the ancient basilisk. Now I've gone ahead and loosely placed this together because I really do want to glue this together. So I haven't crunched these into place perfectly. So you will see some gaps there where I assembled it, but this is actually quite a large miniature. There's the gaps I'm talking about, but I haven't really pressed down very hard yet because I want to be able to pull it apart so I can actually glue them in. So there are some black crevices there around where there's the connections, but I for sure will be pushing those down flush after I go ahead and glue it in place so that they never come off. But yes, this thing is quite fearsome overall, a very nice sculpt indeed. And here is a nice up close look at the Temple Guardians. Pretty awesome and very huge. These are actually quite large indeed. So putting these on top of the clear bases, they're gonna look absolutely awesome. And last but certainly not least, we're gonna go through all the mini cards inside the game. I'll try to go as slow as possible so you can have a chance to read the abilities on them. You'll also see the icon for the expansion in the bottom left hand corner of these cards as I go through. Got Expedition Log, the Hedge Shears, Jeweled Skull, Lucky Bandana, Matches, Otherworldly Compass. Always love the artwork on these cards. They've always been really cool. It's one of the first things I gravitate towards as I look through the cards, but also taking a quick glance down at the abilities. There are some flavor tech on, uh, text, I should say, on some of these. Uh, the Bladed Weapon, for instance, here. This is called the Time Worn Brand. The torch, always good to have torches, actually quite a few torches when you're in the jungle. Ooh, poisoned, at the end of your turn, suffer one face down damage, then flip this card. So I won't be showing you the backside of these cards because that's definitely spoiler territory, but there's a bunch of new poisoned that can show up, which makes a lot of sense in the jungle. We've got fearless here, so effects cannot cause you to suffer horror unless you choose to, because you're so fearless. That's really good, actually. So that's a positive one. Insane, that's nice. It's always nice to see new insane conditions coming into play. So there looks like there's two more to add in the pile. We got a minor injury here with no additional effect. We have infected wounds becoming poison, not so good. Skinned knee becoming fearless, even though the skin knee doesn't bother you. Minor shock, these are sanity ones being added in. So visceral reaction, 
becoming poisoned, delusion of power, becoming fearless. So those basically tie into the new cards being added in here. Call of the storm. When a monster spawns within range, it suffers one damage. That's a really powerful one too. Has a number of iterations as you'll be able to cycle through that deck. Banishment, action, choose a monster or investigator and move that figure up to three spaces away from you, then flip the card. Wow, so that's probably the furthest moving card, I believe, in the game in general of pushing things away, so that's pretty cool. Could be mistaken, there might be something else, but I don't think, I think three is, is pretty far. Uh, action here for summoning is move a monster or investigator to your space, so again, more movement-based stuff going on here. The summoning, we've got... Oh, a snake. Wow, okay. So this is evidence. Part of one of the scenarios for sure. We got the crocodile. More evidence. We've got a jaguar. Wow, that's cool. Uh, turquoise eagle. And a mysterious serpent. Once, oh, and it's an ally. Is that the only ally? That's pretty cool. Once during your turn, you may choose a monster in your space. Uh, then that monster suffers one damage. So it's basically just there viciously attacking it. That's pretty awesome. So that is a look at all the mini cards that come inside the expansion. And that's going to conclude the unboxing for the Path of the Serpent expansion. I really hope this helps you get a good look at all the different components that come inside the expansion and even where to find some of them hidden under the insert. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, keep on rolling solo.